وكذلك أوحينا إليك روحا من أمرنا ما كنت تدري ما الكتاب ولا الإيمان ولكن جعلناه نورا ولكن جعلناه نورا نهدي به من نشاء من عبادنا وإنك لتهدي إلى صراط مستقيم صراط الله الذي له ما في السماوات وما في الأرض ألا إلى الله تصير الأمور Praise be to Allah, we praise Him and we seek His help. Whomsoever Allah guides is the truly guided one. And whomsoever Allah leaves astray, no one can show Him guidance. May peace and blessings be upon Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Dear viewers, welcome to a new episode of The Prophet's Prayer, where we're going to explain in details the full description of the prayer of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In compliance with his command, when he said sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, sallu kama ra'aytumuni usalli. Pray as you have seen me praying. But before that, let me deliver some good news. Uthman ibn Affan, may Allah be pleased with him, narrated that in a sound hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Whenever any Muslim witnesses one of the five daily prayers, the mandatory ones, and he perfects its wudu, purity and cleanness, and he perfects its khushu'a, tranquility and humility during the salah, and he perfects its ruku'a, representing just one of the arcane of the prayer which is bound down. So he perfects the tahara, he perfects the khushu'a, he perfects the prayer itself. This prayer will be an expiation for all the sins that he committed before this prayer, as long as he avoids the major sins. This hadith is supported by another hadith, which is narrated by Abu Hurairah, may Allah be pleased with him. He said that the Prophet ﷺ said, the five daily prayers and the Jum'ah till next Jum'ah, meaning offering Friday prayer till next Friday prayer, is a ransom and an expiation for one's sins which were committed in between, as long as he avoids the major sins. What a glad tiding that constantly the true believer, the servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is given chances after chances to get rid of his sins, to repent and to get over with bad memories, with sins, with faults and mistakes. But can one double and triple their word for his prayer? Of course. The Prophet sallallahu said, and the hadith is narrated by Abu Hurairah, may Allah be pleased with him that whenever the servant of Allah offers a prayer in congregation, he gets the reward 25 times more than that if he offers it alone, at home, or at business. And why is that? The Prophet ﷺ says, whenever the servant of Allah performs a proper wudu and he perfects his tahara, then he heads towards the masjid to pray in jama'ah. Each footstep that he takes towards the masjid gives him two benefits. The first one, it raises him in ranks one degree. The second benefit, 
is that it removes them away from him one of his sins. And as long as the servant of Allah is in the masjid waiting for the salah, the time counts as he is in the salah itself. Not only that. And once the salah is over and he's still sitting, making khitam al salah, remembering Allah the Almighty, angels are surrounding him and supplicating for him, saying, Allahumma ghfir lah, Allahumma arham. Oh Allah, forgive him his sins. Oh Allah, have mercy on him. All of that a person gets because of offering the salah in congregation. As a matter of fact, offering the salah in jama'ah is not optional. It's not by choice. A great number of scholars such as Atai ibn Rabah, Al-Hasan al-Basri, Al-Imam Ahmad, and Al-Imam al-Shafi'i have agreed that offering the salah in congregation for men is mandatory. And those who said it's just confirmed sunnah such as Al-Imam Abu Hanifa or Imam Malik said that one who deliberately does not offer the salah in jama'ah without a valid reason is committing a sin. What is the reference to all of that? Many, many references. First of all, that Allah the Almighty commanded the Prophet ﷺ to lead the believers in the salah, in congregation, even on the battlefield, saying, وَإِذَا كُنْتَ فِيهِمْ فَأَقَمْتَ لَهُمُ الصَّلَاةَ فَلْتَقُمْ طَائِفَةٌ مِّنْهُمْ مَعَكَ If you are with them on the battlefield, so let a party of them stand and line up behind you and take with them their weapons. They are in the ready position, but they are still praying in jama'ah. Then they will divide the prayer, and the second party would come to take their place and continue with the imam while taking their precautions and carrying with them their weapons. A companion by the name Abdullah ibn Umm Maktoum, may Allah be pleased with him, came once to the Prophet wasallam and said, Ya Rasulullah, as you see, I'm a blind man and I find it difficult to attend the prayer in the masjid every time I hear the adhan and I don't have a leader to lead me. So the Prophet ﷺ gave him a permission and exempted him from attending the prayer in jama'ah. Soon as he left, the Prophet ﷺ called him again, and he said, Ya Abdullah, do you hear the adhan? Can you hear the call to prayer? He said, yes. He said, then you must answer it. From that the ulama concluded that as long as the person hears the call to prayer, he should answer the call to as salah and attend it in congregation. That helps the person to be attentive and to offer the salah regularly. Uh, dear viewers, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the beginning of Surah Al-Mu'minun, قَدِ أَفْلَحَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ Successful indeed are the believers. Who are they? What are their qualities and good traits? so that we can compete with them and copy them. The very first quality of the successful believers is الَّذِينَ هُمْ فِي صَلَاتِهِمْ خَاشِعُونَ Those who are khashi'oon in their prayers. Al-Khushu' is an Arabic word. Maybe you can translate it as tranquility, humility and humbleness in the salah. As long as you're attentive and humbling yourself and paying complete attention to what you're reciting in the salah, you are successful. Ibn al-Qayyim, may Allah have mercy on him, said that man is always in a war with Satan. Satan gets very angry and it infuriates him the most to see a believer offering the salah. And whenever the servant of Allah is in sujood, Satan is infuriated the most. Why? Because Allah commanded him to prostrate and he refused. While when he commanded us, we answered immediately. That's why Satan and his offspring try their utmost to divert us from offering the salah on time. So that he would try his best by saying that you still have plenty of time. Don't worry. You have an hour, 
you have two hours, you have that much time, and will keep postponing and giving you a respite till the time of the prayer is out. And delaying the prayer from its proper time is one of the major sins, not only abandoning the prayer, but not praying on time as well. But if the servant of Allah manages to defeat Satan and still offer the prayer on time, and it will be best if he can offer in congregation in the masjid, Satan was still would not leave him alone. What would try to bring to his mind all the lost items, everything that he had forgotten. He would remind him with anything to divert him and distract his attention in the salah. That's why. Uh, Ammar ibn Yasir, may Allah be pleased with him, narrated in one hadith that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, إِذَنْ صَرَفَ الْعَبْدُ مِنْ صَلَاتِهِ Whenever the servant of Allah finishes his prayer, perhaps he gets only one-tenth of it, one-ninth, one-eighth, one-seventh, one-sixth, one-fifth, perhaps one-quarter, one-third, or half of it. Meaning what? You only get a reward for the amount of khushu' you maintain during the salah. How much attention you had in your prayer? Did you pay attention to what you are reciting? To what the Imam was reciting? Did you understand what Allah was saying to you in the salah? And what you were conversing with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with? Did you know and mean everything that you said in the salah? So you get the reward of your prayer according to the attention and khushu'a you developed in the salah. Because of that, it is of a great importance and significance for all the believers to learn how to acquire and to develop khushu'a and tranquility in their prayers. That cannot be achieved without learning how the Prophet ﷺ used to pray. As he said, صَلُّوا كَمَا رَأَيْتُ مُونِي أُصَلِّي In the next and the upcoming episodes, we will be dealing with the description of the prayer of Prophet Muhammad ﷺ, beginning with a takbir, ending with a taslim, dealing with every aspect in the prayer, with every recitation, whether it's a Qur'an or any of the adhkar in ruku' or in sujood, tashahud, etc., why are we doing all of that? So that we gain the maximum benefit of our prayers. Since a salah is the connection between the servant and his creator. If somebody does it without the soul, just the body, just moving his body parts, making some physical exercise without being attentive in the salah, it's unfortunately of no benefit whatsoever. So please stay tuned and will try to handle many of the rules and regulations and prayers of different occasions. Also, inshallah, we'll deal with the voluntary prayers, the nawafil, before and after each prayer. We'll deal with some of the ahkam of the salah, inshallah, in the next few episodes. So please stay tuned. May Allah accept from all of us and see you, inshallah, next time. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.